What's up, nerds? We are your hosts. I am Jake. And I'm Chad. This week we are sponsored by Ray's Energy Drinks. We are also sponsored by Crybaby Craig's Hot Sauce. Uh, this week we will be talking about Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania. Mm. Uh, we'll also be talking about uh, the latest episode of The Last of Us, uh, now out now on HBO and HBO Max. So let's get into it. This is the All Things Nerd Podcast. Someday I'll get it. Nerd. Welcome back, nerds, to the All Things Nerd Podcast, your weekly dive into all things nerd. Chadley, how was your week? Well... That's great. Mine yep. was. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. I'm I kidding. mean, that's about no, no, it. No, no. I mean, I. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Didn't really do much. It was fine, I guess. I mean, we went and saw Ant Man and the Wasp together. That was fun. Um... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right on. Right on. Was, I don't think I really did anything <laughs> else <laughs> like this week got a couple of job interviews don't you yep i do have uh, a couple of interviews lined up well. so i'm stoked on that really excited about the one tomorrow uh that date doesn't matter to anyone else <laughs> yeah. oh, sorry my lumbar support was all jacked up oh but it must be nice that's good oh, yeah i'm happy for you i hope you get it <clears throat> yeah be good what about you how was your week you know, I went and saw Ant Man. <laughs> uh, other than that, not much. Uh, we got a we. Oh, I moved a buddy of mine into his new house, which is pretty exciting for him. Um, and uh, it's kind of great for us because we got to get rid of some furniture that we didn't want here that we <laughs> gave him, and we ordered. You know, we went out and bought a new couch, and that gets delivered tomorrow. And. Uh, one of the cool things that you kind of know is that I've been struggling with, but I almost have it done, is I'm building a fish tank into our wall in the basement. Um, <coughs> it's become a little more of a pain in the ass than I expected it to be, but I'm almost <laughs> done. I'm almost done. It'll be uh, sweet other than that, done. yeah, it's really just been a busy week of doing adult stuff. Haven't had a whole lot of time for nerd stuff other than Ant-Man. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Well, I mean, no other, like, big news uh, to really even talk about. So let's just get right into our first sponsor uh, so that we can start talking about Ant-Man and the Wasp. Yes, our first sponsor is Ray's Energy Drinks. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> fantastic energy drinks, zero calories, zero sugar, and zero crash. If you don't like energy drinks, they have other things, like... Pre-workout packets, cake in a cup, protein-packed pancakes, things like that. Uh, so listen up, learn how to save 15%, and we'll be right back with you to talk about Ant-Man and the Wasp. What's up, nerds? I wanted to take a minute and talk to you about Ray's Energy, an incredible energy drink that provides max energy with zero crash. Ray's Energy takes a giant leap of faith with instilling a high-quality formula to bring a powerful, yet sustained, energetic experience to help you push your workouts and focus to the next level. Perfect for anyone at any time and powered by their Refresh Formula technology, Ray's Energy delivers a performance-enhancing energy drink that aids in multiple different categories that include targeted focus, better recovery time, improved clean energy levels, and a boost in stamina and hydration. But most importantly, every can of Ray's Energy has absolutely zero calories, zero sugar, and zero carbohydrates to give you a smarter and healthier option. So don't settle for an energy drink that contains more sugar and carbohydrates than you can count. Instead, head over to repsports.com. That's R-E-P-P-S-P-O-R-T-S dot com and use the promo code nerd podcast at checkout for 15 percent off your order or if you don't know what you want go ahead and click the link that's in the description for to get a 50 dollars sample pack for free all you do is you cover the cost of shipping 
Again, make sure you use promo code NERDPODCAST at checkout to let them know that we sent you. All right, nerds, we are going to talk about Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. And before we get into this one, uh, spoiler alert, we are going to ruin some shit if you have not seen it. So get the fuck out of here. Come back later. Yay. All right. Ready? That is enough time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> um, First, before we get into it, <clears throat> what were your thoughts before we start breaking it down? Did you like it? Did you not like it? I did like it. I did. <coughs> um, so I don't want to like <clears throat> my feelings on it to get misconstrued at all. I liked it. Uh, it was not as good as I was hoping it was going to be. <clears throat> yeah, that's exactly how I feel. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot. It was yeah. a fun movie, but it did not right. live up to the expectations. <clears throat> There are some other aspects that we'll get into that kind of, like, took away from it, I think. Mm -hmm. Uh, And also, I know that it's kind of been, like, depending on who you ask, it's either been an issue with how long Marvel films have been getting, or it hasn't been, depending, again, like I said, who you ask. Uh, This clocks in at just... Two hours, five minutes. And that includes credit scroll yeah so it's shot it, it also doesn't feel <clears throat> like it's quite that short but it was a short film <clears throat> yeah. and there's not i think for one of the bi- one of the things that slightly bugs me about it <clears throat> i'm so is sorry we <clears throat> didn't get like a beginning and middle like action sequence like we're used to with marvel we got one action sequence at the end of the movie and that's it yeah the rest is just storytelling and spotty storytelling yeah so where where do you want to (laughs) start i mean because not where not where you wrote it wrote it down (laughs) <laughs> we'll get it. We'll, we'll save that. I don't want to. I don't want to spend very much time on that. That's just that's something yeah. that personally bugs me on a personal level. Not the actors, yeah. the actresses, or anything like that. It's just me. Now we have to talk about it. So yeah. the uh, <laughs> the actress that plays Cassie Lang. Uh, for starters, they switched the character from Endgame to this movie, which I thought was unnecessary and weird. And kind of mean because the girl who played Cassie in Endgame thought she was starring in this movie, and they were like, "Nah," and then yeah. hired someone else. <clears throat> um, and I don't know her as a person, so I'm not going to trash talk her at all. I'm not going to. I'm going to trash talk the characters that she has played in the past that annoy the shit out of me that she very much carried into this movie. Uh, her name is Catherine Newton. That's the actress. You seem like a nice person. I'm not being mean to you. I promise. Um, <laughs> she, my girlfriend, made me watch Supernatural. Uh, because I made her watch Smallville, and that was kind of the compromise. She was like, "I'll watch Smallville if you watch Supernatural," and I was like, "Fine." <clears throat> She's in that show, and her character. Fucking makes my head want to explode. She's like this five foot something girl who wants to be a hunter like Sam and Dean, the main characters from Supernatural. But she sucks at it. And every single episode she's in, she is like, I can do this without your help. And sure as shit, she fucking can't. And they end up having to rescue her because she gets into a sticky situation. Uh, so it always annoyed me on Supernatural every episode she was in. I was like, oh, great. It's going to be an episode with her. It's going to be fucking annoying. And that's literally the character she plays in this movie. I was yeah. like, yeah, maybe she'll be good at it. And it was literally like watching an episode of Supernatural where she is <coughs> like, I don't need any help from anybody. <clears throat> and then she gets captured and they're like, oh, great. Now we got to go <clears throat> rescue her. And it was like, oh, cool. So we're watching 
Supernatural. <laughs> She's the same person. Yeah. Sorry. That's like I said, it's a personal issue that I have with her characters, not her as a person. I don't want anyone to think that I'm being a dick to the actress. But the characters that she plays are always a victim and it's super annoying. Yeah. <clears throat> there also I mean, I think we made fun of it from the trailer like <laughs> weeks oh, yeah. ago. <laughs> <clears throat> this I I feel bad because like they they make a point to like show that she's actually very intelligent mm -hmm. and she does have an understanding of everything that's going on. But then they give her just like cheap dialogue. Yeah. And it's just like fully write the character. Like yeah. I didn't think that her acting was bad. I just thought that the character wasn't that well written. Exactly. <clears throat> that and that's what I was trying to say, but like I don't have anything against the actress. Like she as an actress is doing just fine. Yeah. Her character sucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Literally, I mean, the opening sequence, or one of the opening, the how they get into the quantum realm. She's like, we created this thing, you know, so that we don't ever have to go into the quantum realm. It's just going to send a signal down there and kind of, like, work like sonar. And it's going to, like, map it out, map yeah. it out for us. <clears throat> and then the machine kind of, like, freaks out. They get sucked into the machine. And then her first words out of her mouth are... Where are we? And it's like, you built the machine to map out the quantum realm. You got sucked into the machine knowing that it's sending signal into the quantum realm. I'll give you one guess. Where and do you think you are? if you get you it wrong, I'm punching you. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. It, it, it just seemed like lazy writing. Like, they just mm -hmm. wanted her to say something. Mm -hmm. But they couldn't, like, give her something intelligent to say. <clears throat> yeah. It was very frustrating. Oh, again, nothing against Catherine Newton. Yeah. She, she acted just fine in the film. Mm -hmm. I just think that her character was we just, not fully we, written. That is, and something that Chad and I talk about often off camera is that we really enjoy a well-written female character. <clears throat> and when, especially with the pressure that's on for females in every everything, like, do better. Like, the writers. Like, do yeah. better. If you're going to write a female character, <clears throat> don't dumb her down. Like, write it better. Like, yeah. They're, like, and, and we know that Marvel can do it. Look at Miss Marvel. Miss Marvel was fantastic. I love that. I know a lot of people hated it. I loved that show. I thought it was super good. Captain Marvel. I don't really care for Brie Larson, but I love Captain Marvel. It was so, it was well written. Like, it doesn't matter if the actor, actress is, you know someone you like or not as long as the yeah. character is written well you can still enjoy it and you know they i just feel like they kind of didn't write cassie very well in this it's kind of a bummer and, and not just cassie <clears throat> uh you know hope oh, evangeline we'll lily's oh, character we'll get into that <clears throat> we, you say we that will. one However, <laughs> Janet Van Dyne's character was written really well. And really well. she was I, a yeah. badass. Yeah. But it's like, so you can do it for one character, but having three strong women is too much. Like, uh, we'll, we'll get into those things here shortly. Um, another thing was, like, there were some characters that were only there for like comedic relief. Yeah. Like the the glob guy and uh oh, I should have looked this he up. He was kind of cool at the <clears throat> in the end. He was kind of cool. Turns out he's just fucking Kirby. Just yeah. Plus he, his uh, he was important because drinking the juice that he produced or whatever made it so you could understand. Yeah, it was like a universal all languages. Translator. It was actually kind of it was it was kind of, like you is kind of lazy writing. To be like, hey, if you drink this, you can understand every language from every species, <laughs> you know. But it it was kind of cool, so that because like it's kind of a pet peeve to like, oh, they all speak English, you know. Like, how do they yeah. all speak English if they're from outer space or they're from the quantum realm or you know, like whatever. So it was kind of like a nice way to like at least give at least give you a, a reason. reason, yeah, yeah. As where some 
some <coughs> movies that are just like, yeah, we're from space. You know, Star Wars. Million, yeah. <laughs> and we all speak English or with British accents. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Like> what? Um, <laughs> <clears throat> and it was a bummer. Uh, William Jackson Harper's character. I didn't under like, again, it was, he was used as a plot point. Like mm-hmm. he's a telepath. So mm-hmm. his only purpose was used up in the first like encounter with him was mm-hmm. to basically give Scott and Cassie credibility uh, that they don't know why they're in the quantum realm. They don't know how that, like how they survived getting sucked down there. Like that was about it. <clears throat> that was that was a good spot for that (laughs) um also like bill murray's character uh you know there was a lot of in a very long there was a lot of hype behind him too yeah like that he was gonna be in it and i mean technically they didn't show him die so like maybe we'll see him like later on um but in this movie it was short-lived yeah Basically, to it didn't really even further the plot. It just all it did. It just showed that <clears throat> Janet was getting her freak on <laughs> in the quantum realm with Bill <clears throat> Murray's character. Um, also, poor Bill Murray, because now everyone knows that he's got a teeny tiny wang, you know, because he's also teeny tiny. I get it. Yeah, uh-huh, thank you. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm ashamed of that joke. I'm so sorry, Bill Murray. <laughs> Bill Murray's a fucking legend. <clears throat> Continue. Do so. We don't want to like break down, you know, the, the entire yeah. plot points. Um, but there are two end credit scenes. Right. 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 Well, before we get to those, let's talk about just Jonathan Majors, Kang. Oh. Probably the only thing holding this movie together. Yeah. Yeah. Insane. <clears throat> super powerful. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but super also... Super handsome. Super handsome. But also just, like, very charismatic. And because of that, that's terrifying. Yeah. <clears throat> like, he's so charming and for most of the movie like even when he's like threatening Mm -hmm. like doesn't raise his voice it's like rest his soul if prince was still alive and wanted to be a super villain Mm -hmm. probably be the most terrifying person in the world because he just doesn't raise his voice Mm -hmm. he'd be threatening your your life and just be like yeah so this is what's going to happen next. Like, I'm just going to gut you. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to make everyone watch. And it's like, oh, my fucking God. Yeah. <clears throat> He's very just, like, nonchalant about it. Yeah. Like, like if you don't do what I'm asking you to do, I'm going to kill your daughter. And then I'm going to replay that moment over and over and over again. So you have to watch it for the rest of eternity. Yeah. And Scott's like, uh, but, <laughs> but why? <laughs> but for why yeah uh yeah he's very scary um he is the thanos level threat going forward uh yeah. as we know that the avengers five four and five five and avengers six. five yeah uh is going to end with avengers the king dynasty which is jonathan majors uh so he's this is a big deal his introduction in, in well not his introduction in this movie because he was introduced in loki um season one first but you know well I'm variant just over yeah. myself but yeah uh, <clears throat> this is the deal. first time that he calls himself king instead mm-hmm. of just like he who remains mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. the conqueror <clears throat> yeah fucking terrifying yeah Pretty comic <clears throat> accurate. It was cool. The blue face. The purple. Yeah. I was loving it. Yeah. And that it was, uh, <clears throat> instead of just, like, having him have just, like, a blue face, like, 
they made it make sense so that he didn't have to just like be in body paint the entire time. Yeah. Um, which is really cool too. And then also, I mean, we learned that he has history with Janet Van Dyne. Mm-hmm. And that's, she got around down there in the quantum realm. Yeah. Just kidding. They didn't do it that we know of. Yeah, maybe she should have. <clears throat> she missed an opportunity if she didn't. No. Um, but yeah, basically. Each other's ass. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but she kind of like stranded him. Like she almost helped him. Like she was helping him when she was trapped in the quantum realm. To, to get out. To get out because she wanted to get out. And then she realized that he's a fucking monster. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and was like, nope, I'll die down here. Yep. Yeah. And she blew it up in the sense that she made it very big. And veiny. Uh, and triumphant. Than, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm not even going to apologize anymore. No. Uh, <laughs> no need to. It, it, was a lot of, it was a fun movie. Don't let us, you know, talk you out of it. Check it out. Kang yeah. was awesome. Paul Rudd, you're a fucking immortal god yeah. among men. Um, Janet... Kicks Janet ass. Van Dyne the in- is awesome. In Michelle it. Pfeiffer just oh yeah. Aged Michael like Douglas fine wine. was awesome in it. <clears throat> yeah, you know, I mean, there were there were a lot of really 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 good things in this movie. Um, I wanted it to be a little bit longer. The storytelling could have been a little bit a little better. So much um, of the story focused on like Janet, mm-hmm. in which is fine because like she lived in the quantum realm for thirty years, like. Yeah, but also a lot of it wasn't, like, flashbacks. It was just kind of, like, her, like, eluding the question of what happened. Yeah, that was kind of annoying. Except for, like, then, a 10-minute yeah. thing about Kang. But everything else... like, finally just, like, well, this is what happened. And it's like, well, why didn't she just tell us that from the beginning? Yeah. Like, there was no, like, you know, like, there was no embarrassing, like, story behind what happened like there's no reason she should have been keeping it from anybody like once yeah. you were once they were in there like i get it like she was trying to put it all behind her like now that she was out of there and she didn't want to talk about it but once you got back there and everyone's like hey what happened hey what happened and she's like i don't want to talk about it it's like bitch spill the beans we're we're, we're in here, here. <laughs> yeah. you lived here for 30 <clears throat> years fucking tell us what's going on <laughs> yeah. and then when she did it was like why did you? Why? Oh, you mean you, you continue to be a hero to like save yeah. everyone? Oh, why are yeah. like uh, so frustrating? <clears throat> yeah, it was. <laughs> again, it was a good movie, and I don't <laughs> like. I didn't. I don't even mind that she was like elusive to it. It's just that so much of the movie like revolved around that plot point, mm-hmm. and with the length of the movie, like either cut that part down and give us more. Yeah. Ant Man and the Wasp, or make the movie a little bit longer and give we us didn't more Ant Man and, and the Wasp. But we got until the Ant-Man, we got a little bit at the very yeah, end. Yeah, a little bit of Ant Man and the Wasp, and a little bit of Ant Man and his daughter. I don't know yeah. what you call her, Wasp Junior Larva. <laughs> <laughs> I think <laughs> in the comics, uh, she, she's had a couple of. Names like larva? Stinger and Maggot, uh, <laughs> Maggot, <laughs> and uh, Stature, I think. Oh, nice. Okay. I don't know oh, what my they're. Camera is like lagging. Sorry. Oh, it's not on my end. Oh, it's not. Oh, no. okay. Then who gives a shit? Yeah. Mm. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I do. All right. I I gotta say this is one thing that really bugs me is hope. And I, I'm going to sound like such like a, I, I must sound like I'm sexist, but this is what bothered me about her. And it's not just this movie. It's been an ongoing thing in the, the first movie, the first Ant-Man movie. She's jealous that her dad, Hank picked Scott to be Ant-Man instead of her. And the entire first movie, she treats Scott like shit because she's jealous. Then in Ant-Man two, She's jealous that Ant-Man got to help Captain America and Scott didn't call her to back him up. So she is jealous again and treats him like shit the entire movie. 
Uh, and then in this movie, like right out, right out of the fucking gate, her, Hope, Scott's daughter, and Hank are like working together behind Scott's back, and that's what gets them all sucked into the quantum realm. And when Scott finds out about it, he's rightfully so pissed, and Hope is kind of like a total bitch to him about it, like. You know what? When they're at the dinner table and he's yeah. like, whoa, 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 you guys have been working like on stuff behind my back. I don't want Cassie in this fucking line of work because it's dangerous. And they're like, oh, you don't know what she can do and what she can handle. And the first thing she does is get all of them sucked into the quantum <laughs> realm. And it's like, okay, well, that's what you get for recruiting a teenager uh, to do shit like this. And so I just, I think Hope. In the comics, she's not a bitch. In the sh- mo- the almost said the show, the movies so far, she has been terrible. And yeah, uh, Evangeline Lilly, who plays the Wasp, is campaigning for a solo movie, and I'm just not feeling it. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> down the road, if they start writing Hope better. I'm all for it. Yeah. We like well-written female characters. Just not even female just well-written characters. No, I'm saying female characters because well, the cause... two people that I shat on in this movie yeah. are both female, and I'm like, well, I feel kind of like a yeah. dick. But it's, it's not just because... unfortunately most of the time no. th- they're not written by women. Mm-hmm. They are, you know, they're written by men and they're like how do we make strong independent characters that don't need no man like let's let's make her a bitch yeah and it's like overconfidence rude standoffish it's like you can give them compelling emotions and let them just be strong like miss marvel oh i was gonna say gamora yeah gamora is one of my favorite characters nebula nebula is my favorite female character in the mcu like to this day i love nebula she's fucking hilarious she is a badass she's strong like she doesn't take shit from anybody like i love her character well except for her dad she's got some issues there but yeah but daddy issues can be fun um (laughs) it's just but she's compelling also because she like she resists the urge to show her emotions but mm-hmm. when she does, they're like deep and complex and mm-hmm. just well written. Yeah. Like just do that. More of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. More of that. Please. Uh, let's talk about the end credit scenes now. Yep. Couple big things. One, uh, this is something I won't take credit for. I saw it somewhere else, and then I was like, holy shit, you're right. Um the portals that the Kangs use to arrive in the first end credit scene are the excuse me same portal that uh, Reed Richards uses in Multiverse of Madness. Reed Richards is Mr. Fantastic from the Fantastic Four, played by John Krasinski. Uh, but it's the same portal. And if you know a little bit, you already know. And if you don't, I'll explain it to you. Um... Nathaniel Richards is a variant of Kang, and Nathaniel Richards, the last name, pay attention, is <laughs> Reed and Sue's son. A variant of Kang is the son of Reed and Sue Richards. Um, and I that could be a, kind of a plug with the same portal that they use. Don't know if they'll go down that road. It would be cool if they did. We do know Fantastic Four is coming soon. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's going to be and, a pillar and going with forward. all these variants I mean you'll we'll talk about it in a second here there's a shit ton of variants the council of kings so one of them could very easily be Nathaniel Richards and yeah so that was kind of cool uh, what else that was cool I mean and then we get uh, uh, a reference to or not a reference we actually see Ramatut mm-hmm. um, which is cool because in the comics that was the first uh, encounter with Kang the Conqueror uh, with the Fantastic Four 
Mm. Um, they ended up retconning Ramatut to actually be a variant of Kang later on, but I mean that was the first time that he was introduced. That is one thing that differs from the comics to the movies. In the comics, they don't all look the same. All the like Ramatut, uh, Kang the Conqueror, um, Nathaniel Richards, um, Iron Lad, a variant of Kang is Iron Lad. Uh, not only do they not look like some of them are different um, nationalities, stuff like that yeah. in the comics, uh, in the movie, all of them are going to be played by um, Jonathan Majors. Yeah. yeah. But we do see some where, like, Ramatut uh, is a little bit, like, lighter skinned we do see some alien versions but it's still mm -hmm. very clearly like jonathan major's face just kind of like distorted or mm -hmm. stuff like that but it's cool that we get to see the council of kangs because i mean that's a thing and, and that's going a to lot of kings and that's going to play into one kang dynasty mm -hmm. and also secret wars because mm -hmm. multiversal council of the most terrifying villain that we've actually seen. Mm -hmm. And just, we didn't talk about this, but I just want to throw this out there. It's going to be really cool. Uh, uh, holy shit. Tom Holland uh, just signed a new deal. I just read this today um, with the MCU, with Marvel, and he will be one of, if not the leading character in the Kang Dynasty. Yeah. So, Spider-Man is going to step it up quite a bit in the next few years here, which oh, I'm is really exciting. So excited! Because in the comics, he at, he is eventually the leader of the Avengers. Yeah. So it's like really waiting for that to happen. I get he's young and you know, but now after nowhere or no way home, uh, nowhere, nowhere home, uh, <laughs> you know, we see he's got. He lost all his friends. He lost all of his mentors, you know, and I'm straying from the subject at hand, but I'm very excited to see yeah. uh, Spider-Man in like a more leading role. Yeah. It, and Avengers. I think that he definitely deserves it. Yeah. And also, I mean, on the kind of on the topic, you know, of Kang, Nathaniel Richards, Fantastic Four. I mean, he also in the comics is best friends with Johnny Storm, mm -hmm. you know, from yeah. the Fantastic Four. So, it's cool that things are starting to like point in those directions. Because mm -hmm. um, also over the past couple of years, we've been getting like comic accurate suits, you mm -hmm. know, all this stuff. It's just like they're even Spider Man's, yeah, yeah. At the end of Nowhere Home, No Way Home. God <laughs> no damn it! <laughs> Why? I don't know what's happening. Uh... <laughs> <sighs> uh... Anyways, I know that we, we shit on some aspects of this movie. It was enjoyable. I do yeah. want to see it again. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, they're just little nitpicky things based on, like, our preferences more than anything else. You know? And something I notice about myself is sometimes when I first see a movie and my expectations are high, I, I don't enjoy it. And then the next time I watch it, after my expectations have been lowered, I really enjoy it. Like, I didn't... I saw Step Brothers in theaters, and I <laughs> thought it was the dumbest fucking movie I've ever seen in my life. One of my favorite movies. I shit you not. The first time I saw it, I was like, this is so fucking stupid. And somebody told me to rewatch it, and, and it was after, like, years after it came out. And I shit you not, I was in tears. I was crying so... Or laughing so hard. I was like crying from laughing <laughs> yeah so and i think it's because my expectations were like this is gonna be the funniest fucking movie ever and yeah. i went and saw it and i was like well this is fucking stupid and i watched it again and i was like this is the funniest fucking movie ever yeah uh so that could be what's happening here too like my expectations were like i want this like big crazy cinematic experience and really this is like the first movie in this phase and it's probably more of a setup kind of a movie than it is yeah you know what we're what we're used to uh because at the end of the phase what are we're beginning phase four right now phase five so at, the, so at the end of phase four we got so much action because like it was ending that phase and 
Yeah. You know, now we're setting up Kang and build it like remember in Yeah, now it's first now it's back to storytelling instead of yeah. like And I think we're just we're used to this. Sorry, this. And then they because it's the first one in the phase, they've brought us here. And yeah. like we're used to just being like, Oh, what the fuck? Like this isn't as I even said it in this episode that I was I was like, there was only one action sequence and it was at the end. Like, god damn it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, so cut the movie some slack. It is very fun. It was a very fun movie. I promise you when I rewatch it, I will my mind will be changed. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us about our other sponsor, Jake. Oh yeah, sorry. We're going there. Okay. Sponsor <laughs> number 2. Oh, we credited. didn't we didn't touch on the second end credit scene. Oh, we didn't. It's kind of setting up Loki season 2. Let's just Yeah. Leave it there. It's cool. Loki, Mobius, and then we yeah. see a variant of Kang. It's nice that we get to see Loki and Mobius together. Because at the end of season 1, Mobius has no idea who Loki is when he approaches him. Yeah. Um so they're clearly working together again, which means that they figure it out somewhere down the line. But they are watching uh, basically uh, a, ver- uh, a variant of Kang. Yeah. yeah. I almost said a variant of John Ben Majors. But, uh... <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I was like, oh, that's dope. Because I think that's the next thing we get. And then Guardian of the Ga- Guardians of the Galaxy? Or is it Guardians? I then think Loki? Guardians, then Loki. Then Loki? Okay, cool. And then so, eventually the Marvels, but that was pushed back. Yeah. Only by four months. It's not... Like, wow, you actually like counted the right number of months this time. I did that <laughs> as a joke. I um, know. <laughs> Tell them about anyways, this. Sponsor number two. It's Crybaby Craig's Hot Sauce. It's a pickled habanero and garlic hot sauce that goes on practically anything listen up we'll tell you more about it hey you nerds do you love spice supporting small businesses what about enhancing the flavor of your favorite foods if you said yes to any of those our good friends over at crybaby craig's have the perfect solution for you crybaby craig's is a pickled habanero and garlic hot sauce that goes perfectly with your favorite foods adding the perfect amount of spice and enhancing the flavor of everything it touches. Started in Minneapolis by Craig back in 2012, Crybaby Craig's has become a Minneapolis and Minnesota staple in the sauce world. So head over to crybabycraigs.com and order yours today. Okay, friends. Uh, So we're going to talk... This is the Earth. (laughs) This is the Pretty Sweet Earth, you might say. It's round. Uh... (laughs) Uh, we're going to talk about the latest episode of The Last of Us, which is episode CX. I almost held up seven. But, yeah. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> first <Smart>. off, <laughs> smart, <laughs> smart. Uh, spoiler <laughs> alert for those that haven't seen it yet. That's well, that's it. So giant spoiler alert because not only. Are we going to talk about this episode? We have a couple theories based on uh, video cl- video <clears throat> game clips that we've seen online, and we are going to explore that a little bit. Excuse yeah. me. In this episode. Uh, so if you don't want to know what happens in the video game or in this episode, uh, you know, tune out, tune back in. Yeah. That's enough time. All right, everybody died. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> the show ends here. Uh, no. Uh, I mean, they make it to Wyoming. Mm-hmm. And, my God, does this show have fantastic cinematography? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. holy Other than other, somebody, somebody pointed out online... There is There's a, a scene where a you crew can see member. the camera crew. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just like poking out from the tree line. Yeah. <laughs> Other than that, fantastic. I didn't I didn't notice it in the episode. So I didn't either, yeah. It's a it's a blink and you'll miss it sort of moment, but yeah. Kind of like the Starbucks cup from Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. You know, stuff like that. So Yeah. 
or in House of the Dragon where you just see the green tape on uh, Patty Constantine's fingers because they forgot to edit it out. <laughs> I don't think I saw that. That's funny. Uh, yeah. I'm going to look that up. That's funny. Yeah, it's in like uh, the third, maybe fourth episode of House of the Dragon. Anyways, uh, the show is so good, man. Mm-hmm. I, a lot of people are mad that there's not a lot of infected in the show. Yeah, it's that's not the is, point of it. Though, this is know? kind. Of, it's kind of this is kind of how I've explained it to a couple people that who have who have uh, said that to me that they're like I like it, but. I was kind of expecting more zombies, like blah blah blah. This is, in in my mind, the way the way that I play it out is it's I am Legend, right? Not in the same sense, but in the fact that I am Legend was about the meaning behind everything. Uh, it wasn't yeah. about the vampires. It was about the meaning behind everything. At the at at the the flashbacks where his daughter is saying, "Dad, look at the butterfly." And then the girl who saves him and her son, the girl has a butterfly tattoo on the back of her neck. And uh, what's uh, what the fuck is his name in that movie? I forget it. Uh, Will Smith's character basically lost his faith, like his Christian faith. And I know that we're not particularly Christians, but uh, that's the point of the movie is that he lost everything, including his faith. And when this girl shows up to... Uh, save him uh because he's like after his dog dies he's like i'm fucking done like i'm gonna kill myself and she saves him and they do the flashback dad look at the butterfly and she has a butterfly tattoo on the back of her neck then a lot of people missed it but when the vampires are breaking into his clinic or whatever the Mm -hmm. glass breaks when they slow it down the glass breaks into the shape of a butterfly oh and yeah so that's what this this show is that it's more about the symbolism behind like everything, not the fucking infected. Yeah. It's not and about the infected. How humanity yes. reacts to something on this grand of a scale that just cripples the world. Yeah. And how they move on from it, how chaos goes, how there's little pockets of hope. You know, mm-hmm. they in this episode they come across an old couple living in the woods and they'd been living there years before the breakout even, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, <clears throat> but, you know, they've managed to <clears throat> survive. You know, they find <clears throat> a whole community that's living behind walls mm-hmm. and stuff like that in the middle of nowhere and thriving. You know, they've got like a, a town hall, you know, cafeteria sort of thing where they play movies on, you know, weekend nights and i loved it it was very very much like a like an old school cowboy town yeah like that you would see in like a western yeah you know what i mean yeah it was cool i was like oh that's so cool bare like running on bare minimum i mean they have like electricity and stuff like that because they're not too far from uh weren't they using like water yeah 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 it was hydro uh hydroelectric uh from the dam and it's just you know, you see, especially because the episode before, we saw, like, the worst of humanity. Mm-hmm. You know, where they're willing to sacrifice everything for personal vengeance. Killing a child. or it's, yeah. Yeah. And all of that. And then we see the exact opposite in this episode where it's, there's a school. You know, mm-hmm. there's kids running around playing games. It's a whole community living and Joel's brother. Yeah, and this is where Tommy is. Yeah. Um Gabriel Luna plays Tommy and Ghost Man, Rider. their dynamic is oh yeah. The best <laughs> Ghost Rider. Uh their dynamic is so powerful. It's sad. It is sad. And there's you know, there's resentment and remorse and... Did you catch the, like, par- like the... It's kind of like... So, remember in the very first episode, 
uh, Joel has his daughter, and he's like a working guy, and he's got it all together, right? And he leaves to go pick Tommy up. Was it Tommy, right? Yeah. To pick Tommy up because Tommy's drunk and in jail. So Joel has to go pick him up. Now it's and now it's flipped. And spoiler alert, now Tommy has got this community and he's got a wife and a pregnant wife at that with a baby on the way. And Joel is the one who's lost everything. A, lost everything and he's just broken and whatever. And he even uh, lies to Tommy flips. about yeah. Tess at How, at the yeah. start of the episode says that she's fine. Mm-hmm. You know, she's you know, she's she's doing okay, like she's doing fine. Yeah. Uh probably because of that same dynamic of, you know, he doesn't want to let it be known that how broken and destroyed he is. Yeah. Uh that being said, like oh shit. <laughs> Pedro Pascal can fucking act, dude. Like this, there's Holy a very emotional shit. scene between him and his brother, and it was like, Jesus Christ, dude, this guy, <laughs> this fucking guy, this fucking guy, Daddy Pedro, <laughs> <laughs> turned into father. Aww. Father, help! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's so. There's a scene in this community, and this is where I was talking about I may, and if any of you have played the game and know uh, whether I'm right or wrong, feel free to let us know. Um, there's a scene. Jubes. No. <laughs> uh, there's a scene where Ellie is just like shoveling food into her mouth, and another girl comes over and kind of like gives her a dirty look and Ellie kind of snaps at her. Um, I think, okay, here's, here's where the giant spoiler is. So if you don't want to hear this, you have about five seconds to get out of here and then I'm going to say it. Okay. Saying it. Uh, I know that Joel dies Mm -hmm. in game two, season two. Uh, he gets stabbed in the back. Um, and it's by a very young looking female character. Uh, I think that this, again, I haven't played the game, so I don't know if this is true or not. This is my own personal theory. I think that this girl that is giving Ellie the evil eye is the girl who's going to kill Joel. Um, and I, I think that this next episode next week is going to show why that girl does not like Ellie. Or maybe it won't. Maybe the girl, or maybe that girl, uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe that girl knows that Ellie has been bitten or something, something, I don't know. And she's out to kill her because she thinks she's infected or who fucking knows. I know that Joel dies. I know that a young looking girl does it. And there is a very awkward moment between Ellie and this random ass girl in this community. And I think that's the girl who's going to do it. That's all I know. And I don't even know if I know because, you know. Yeah. Neither of us have, have played the games. Uh, I have it. I want to play it, but I don't want to ruin anything for myself. (laughs) Other than the fact that I accidentally ruined the fact that Joel dies. Yeah. But that was an accident. I wasn't trying to find that out. I was like, oh, I'm watching this show. And I clicked on the clip and I was like, oh, no, <laughs> no, I didn't want to know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And this might not be as big of a spoiler, but uh, through like, you know, next week on The Last of Us, you, we know that this next episode is kind of a flashback mm-hmm. focusing more on Ellie this time. Uh, I haven't watched the up next on the last of us, like the trailer for Mm -hmm. the next episode. Uh, but I did hear, uh, as a rumor that Ashley Johnson was cast to play Ellie's mother. Um, for those of you that don't know who Ashley Johnson is, is she's 
the voice of Ellie in the game. Uh, she also voices Pike in The Legends of Vox Machina, but... Which we've talked about very Which we've recently. talked, yeah, very recently. Um, but I, I'm intrigued to, to learn more of Ellie's backstory. It just sucks that this episode ends on a major cliffhanger. And it's like, oh, sweet. So we don't know what happens for a couple of weeks now. <laughs> uh, yeah, so... Joel, Daddy Pedro, uh, <laughs> tries to get Tommy, his brother, Gabriel Luna, to take Ellie uh, to Denver from mm -hmm. Wyoming uh, because that's where supposedly the fireflies are, that there's a medical center there they so that they can use Ellie's her blood, blood to create a vaccine. There's a very emotional and kind of like heart-wrenching uh, moment between Joel and Ellie. And Joel ends up taking Ellie. Anyways, even though he's he's lost his confidence in himself. Uh, he's slow. He's kind of deaf in one ear. Yeah. Yeah. And he's <laughs> suffering like panic attacks, nightmares, stuff like that. And he's just afraid that he can't protect Ellie the way that he wants to. They get to Denver, and <laughs> your dog's just obsessed with I'm going to put her in their fucking kennel in like two seconds. <laughs> She's driving me crazy. I'm so sorry. <laughs> You're totally fine. Uh, pause, yeah, you want to do that right now? Yeah, yeah we can do that right now. Nuts. <laughs> sorry, I'm like overly distracted because she's just getting into everything. <laughs> so, sorry for the distraction. My dog was driving me crazy. I had to put her in a kennel for a little bit here. Uh, at least till we're done recording. Uh, anyways, uh, Tommy is supposed to take Ellie, um, and then Joel basically takes her anyway. He kind of, like, gives her, like, an option. Like, I figured you'd have an option to go with me or him. And she's like, throws her backpack at him. And she's like, let's go. <laughs> uh, which is heartwarming because the scene before that, prior to that, was with Joel and Ellie. And he basically is like, you're not my kid. I don't care about you. Like, he's a total dickwad to her. Uh, and he's like, you're going with my brother. And that's the end of the story. And just kind of, like, storms out of the room. And it's super sad. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then the next morning, he's like, well, you can come with me if you want. And she's like, yeah, let's go. They go to Denver. They find signs that have little fireflies spray painted on them. I assume that's from the game. I'm assuming. Uh, but I know that Nicole plays Zelda. Have you noticed that the firefly symbol looks a lot like the, the symbol for Hyrule? From Zelda, The Legend of Zelda. I did not notice that, no. That's all I see when I, when really? I see the symbol. I'm like, oh, so we're going to smash random see, clay pots for some rupees? Well, yeah. kind of like, I thought it was weird because they don't look like fireflies. They look like dragonflies. The, like, stencil or whatever they yeah. use to, like, spray paint it. Like, it doesn't look like a firefly at all. Fucking dumbasses. But, uh... <laughs> it's the apocalypse. They don't yeah. know what fireflies look like. Yeah. Even though books existed before the apocalypse, but no. Tomato, potato. <laughs> it's my favorite thing to say lately. <laughs> um, so they go look at, I mean, it's, you get a bad vibe right away. Like, them rolling in there. It's like a deserted, like, ghost town. Yeah, like it's a, a city. Old basically. college campus. College campus, that's what it was. Yeah. And uh, it's kind of cool. There's like some little little monkeys running around, which yeah. kind of like fucks with you a little bit because you hear noises and they're like, "Oh God, there's something in here!" But it's a little monkey banging some pots around. Yeah. Um. <laughs> they even make a joke. They're like, "Oh, at least it wasn't a clicker." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, that's right. <laughs> and then they find a map which shows where the fireflies probably went, rather than 
where they are, which was supposed to be there. Um, yeah. Now it looks like they've moved further north to Salt Lake City. Utah. Hmm. Land of polygamy. I mean, opportunity. <laughs> and then they hear some noises outside, and there's actual people like walking around the town. And Joel's like, fuck, we gotta get out of here. Like, let's go back to our horsey. And something bad happens. Something real bad happens. Uh, <clears throat> so they get back to the horse. And one of the ravagers, whatever. Um, I don't think that's what they call them. But that's Guardians of the Galaxy, the ravagers. But basically that's what they are. Uh also, Harry Potter. Isn't that what they call the... Well, there's the Death Eaters, and then there's the Snatchers. No, the Snatchers. snatchers. Oh, that's right. That's what it was, yeah. Snatchers. Anyways. Um, but <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, they, they sneak up on Joel and Ellie. Ellie sees the guy coming, warns Joel because he's deaf in one ear, and uh, he kills the dude. But he gets stabbed mm. uh, while that happens. So, like an idiot, he pulls out <laughs> the... It's a broken handle from a baseball bat, mm. like a wood baseball bat. Is that what it was? Okay. It looked yeah. like, a, like, a, like a shank or something, like a, we, like a makeshift. Because the dude swings it, and then mm. uh, Joel ducks and it breaks. Hits the tree. Yep. On the tree, yeah. Yep. Uh, that makes sense. And then when they're kind of like wrestling, he must have gotten stabbed with it. He did. Well, yeah, he did. <laughs> he, he, he did. Uh, but like an idiot, he pulls out the the piece from him, and then he starts bleeding profusely. Mm -hmm. And it's like, rule number one, don't pull out the thing you were stabbed with, because yeah. uh, you'll bleed more. Yeah. Most of the time. And if it's, that's and if it's in like an organ or something like that, you want that. Uh, I don't know if those rules apply in an apocalypse where you can't get to a hospital. But Well, it still I applies assume. to how the human body works. <laughs> yeah. Hey, but, uh, there's this thing lodged in you. But also at the same time, like you're jumping on a horse and you're going to wiggle around and that thing's still in you. It's just going to... Do more damage inside of that. You know what I mean? Like I don't yeah. know. I don't know what the rules are. In I went to school to be a paramedic, so I know that you don't pull foreign objects out. I know that. That's like you secure it. You're supposed to wrap them up so it doesn't move as little as possible until you can get them to the hospital. But if you're jumping on the back of a horse and outrunning people that are trying to kill you, I don't know. Three dudes that are that. probably named Thad, Chad, and Brad. I know I have a very douchey bro name. <laughs> it's um, terrible. I do want. I just. I do want to point out the one thing. It did differ from the. The I almost said comic. Uh, it did differ from the game, in a way where, uh, in the game, not comic. I almost <laughs> said it again. Uh, Joel, when he's fighting this guy, they are inside of the building, and they go over the edge of the the balcony and when joel lands he lands on something and it actually uh impales him from the backside through the front uh right here in his like rib cage area oh look i've so been they, impaled <laughs> yeah so they changed it a little bit he still got stabbed um <clears throat> in the game it was much more of a problem that i mean don't get me wrong huh. A baseball bat knife to the fucking <laughs> baseball bat ribs knife. or knife. Yeah. Wrench it's, knife. Yeah. Still sucks, but in the game <coughs> it, went, it goes all the way through. Here? Him. Yeah. Do here. <laughs> Shish kebab. <laughs> Shish ke Joel. He's Joel paled. Yeah. That didn't work as well as I thought it would in my head. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologize everyone for that bad joke. Uh but they get on their horse, took it to the old town road, uh, and they just <laughs> rode. You yourself. He rode until he couldn't no more. You know, just when I think 
you can't get any dumber <laughs> go and do something like this and totally redeem yourself <laughs> Uh, I saw it in a movie <laughs> once. <laughs> Everything worked out fine. <laughs> no. They, people caught yeah. up to him. <laughs> Everybody the movie, died. They catch up with them a half mile down the road and slit their throats. It was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> if you know, you know. And if you don't, you're young. Too young for this. Uh, <laughs> but they're, they're riding and basically Joel passes out from blood loss, falls off the horse. And that's where the episode ends. Mm-hmm. Oh. And the preview for next week is a flashback episode. So we won't know what happens to Joel for two weeks. We we might kind of like what we did, it, kind of like what we got in episode three, where most yeah. of it was a flashback, but there kind is... Like the very end of it. Yeah. We might get some of that. Oh, we don't know. But... I'm, I'm putting... I'm putting my. I think it's gonna. I think that girl knows Ellie, and I think this episode next week is gonna show how she knows Ellie, and I yeah. think that's gonna be bad. Yeah, I, I, I'm intrigued by your theory. Mm-hmm. My theory is that Tommy followed. Joel and Ellie, and he's well, yeah, gonna be I the one that too. to yeah. to save them. Not as important of a theory. I think so because she's a teenager. They're and in the middle of nowhere. Even like she's crying. She's too like, little. I can't to, like, do this without you. Yeah. Like she's too little to like pick him up and put him on the horse. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like I'm not. That's not even being a dick. I'm just saying. Like, she's a yeah. She's a little kid. Fourteen year old. He's probably like. A hundred and eighty pound fucking guy, yeah. you know. I can and to put do it that. and to put it on a horse that <laughs> she can't get on like without over her head. Yeah, yeah. She needs like, him to boost her onto it because it's. She could oh, just tie a rope around his legs and fucking drag his ass <laughs> along the I train. Mean, along like the a, train tracks, just. I was gonna say if she put like a sled, make him real comfortable, like you know. Yeah, I don't know. I, I haven't played the game, so I don't know what the fuck's gonna happen. Yeah, I th- I think that Tommy followed them because when Joel asked Tommy to take Ellie, like he told him, like she's immune. Mm-hmm. Like we're taking. She's important. Yeah, like yeah. we are trying to meet up with the Fireflies because they have a medical research center where they're trying to work on a vaccine and mm. she's the key. Yeah. And Tommy knowing that he's about to be a father, you know, trying to like re like have a life in this post-apocalyptic world. Mm-hmm. Like it was like he didn't even hesitate. Yeah. To be like, yeah, I'll we'll leave at dawn. Mhm. And uh so I think that even though Joel took Ellie, Tommy is going to remember the conversation of, he said that he doesn't feel confident to be able to protect her. He can't hear. He's older. He's in pain. He's going, he's suffering with anxiety and all this stuff. Mm. Like, Oh yeah. That's a big thing in this episode is the yeah. panic attacks. Yeah. He has two he's of having them. like panic attacks. Yeah. yeah. Um, She's like, is it your heart? What's going on? What? What? Just making it worse? And he's like, fucking, just leave me alone. <laughs> like, you're making it worse. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm going to punch you in the face. I'm fine. <laughs> that or- I did Friday. that. I did that on purpose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're not going to get into that here, though. <laughs> but that is exactly what happened. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I'm intrigued to see where this goes. Mm-hmm. We're we're six episodes in. There's, There's only three, three more left. Do you have? We've obviously almost every week. It's just been <clears throat> pro after pro after pro as to why we love the show so much. Do you have any cons for this past week's episode? Uh, 
no, 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 no. I don't have anything bad to say about the show at all. It's so good. Yeah. Do you? Uh, no. Uh, I was like, did like, we talk about it? Ep- no. <laughs> it's it's blank on our notes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like episode four ish. Oh, um, we did. Oh, sorry. You keep. I going. my bad. My I started to like have. It wasn't really a con. It was just like a. Because I know that in the game, the infected are play a little bit of a bigger role, but they're more just like random encounters as you're like trying to survive. And I was like, oh, there's not a whole lot of affected. But then when I really like thought about it, I was like, that's not the point of the show. That's mm-hmm. the, the the infected are just like a it's almost like a side story. It's, it's. I assume we'll get something pretty crazy in the last like two episodes. Yeah, because we're supposed to get something that was just a concept for the game that never made it into the game. Yeah. Um, and I think the reason why there's not a whole lot of cons because most most of the time, game adaptations into live action, mm. the movie Dune, the Halo mm. series, you know, like they've got cool moments, but like they usually don't hold up to the game. Mm. I think the reason why this works so well is because <laughs> they're staying true. Well, cuz the one of the head writers, the co-writers of the show was the co-writer and co-creator of the game. Yeah. So like it's just they're just making tweaks to translate it better for TV, not making shit up and changing things and stuff like that. Just for fun, um, not the two episodes ago when we saw the giant, um, what do they call it? The, Clicker, the bloater, but the, the bloater. Yeah. That is not CGI. That is a person in a suit. Really? Really, really. That's it's a like a big it's dude. Like a, it's like a seven foot tall or seven, six or something like that. Uh, silicone fucking suit. It's not CGI. That is wild. Because I knew, yeah. like, <laughs> I knew that for the infected and especially the clickers, that those aren't CGI. Like, they hired, yeah, acrobats and uh, like motion capture actors to do all that Dick stuff. Grayson, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it, kind the of flying yeah. Graysons, if you will. Yeah, <laughs> they uh, didn't fly so well. <laughs> hmm. R.I.P. Uh, funny. <laughs> it's still funny. <laughs> <laughs> fuck <laughs> I I didn't know that the bloater wasn't CGI either I just yeah I just saw the thing the other day yeah that's so but cool yeah, they showed like the makeup people and it's literally just a guy in a suit that's just a so... suit isn't it <laughs> it's a suit <laughs> a suit case yeah casing it's a brief it's a briefcase isn't it <laughs> but yeah um I just thought that was cool. So that is really cool. Mm-hmm. I I love the show. I love that. I feel like you lose cool like cool effects with CGI. I get that technology is like really cool right now, and you can CGI a lot of shit. And we have in past episodes been like, why didn't you just CGI it? That shit looked stupid. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, uh. But in cases like this, it, it is cool to see that, you know, special effects are not made by a computer all the time. It's pretty cool. Yeah. And it, it adds an element to, like, the fear also mm-hmm. of, like, the actors because they're l- really running from those creatures. Yeah. It's not like a guy in a green suit with a fucking ball on top of his head <laughs> yeah he's like you gotta look at the ball and be be scared of the ball yeah ah. <laughs> yeah oh no <laughs> yeah squeaky 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 <laughs> like <laughs> you know yeah it's this, yeah the show is great we love it um watch it if you're not watching it if you're not watching it and you're still listening Sorry, I'm not sorry. Yeah, you had your chance to walk away. Yeah. Uh, I give you five seconds. <clears throat> Twice. <laughs> That's ten. I said it four times. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't want, want salmon. salmon. 
Full circle. Back to Step Brothers. <laughs> We're good. We're good at this. We are oh, what bitch. people would call professionals. Yeah. And we're funny, damn it. We are funny. I don't have anything on my wall to prove that I'm a professional. <laughs> how how much would it cost to get like a like an 8 by 10 sticker of the stickers we have that say we're funny, damn it? Probably not that expensive. I want one. It's going right there. <laughs> we're funny, damn it. <laughs> I'll look into it. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, listeners. Uh, I'm not. Go watch the show. Please go watch the show. It's so good. Uh, it's game accurate, mostly. Um, Pedro Pascal. Oh, oh, that's what I was going to say. You told me about it. Um, we apologize, and we did it again this week, and it's because I didn't remember until just now. Uh, Bella Ramsey, is that her name? Mm-hmm. Is non-binary yes and we've been calling been using she her pronouns yeah. and we are mm-hmm. very sorry yep we um, didn't know we just found out so yeah we will fix that and and i we didn't for, remember we forgot to now, touch so. base about that uh yeah. at the start of the episode ellie in the show and in the game is identifies as a girl goes by she but when we're actually talking about like bella ramsey as the actor uh, we should be using their preferred pronouns, and we are sorry about that. Thank you yeah. for for bringing that back up because that's something that we needed to to address because we we messed up, and that's mm. just disrespectful. So, not intentionally disrespectful. We right. just didn't know, and right we we, we didn't it going we forward. didn't know at first, and we forgot to bring that up, and we still made the the mistake uh, this week. This I week. literally just remembered it, like. Five minutes ago, and then we yeah. started talking, and I lost it, and I was like, I was gonna say something. Yeah. I don't remember what it was. And I was like, Oh shit! <laughs> yeah, <There>. I remember. <laughs> so yeah. Also, uh, from the first episode to now, I think that we have a thousand percent got on board with Bella's portrayal of Ellie. Yes. Yep. It, it's not we that were... we were ever against uh, their portrayal. Nope. Um, it was just that we really liked uh, the actress that played Sarah, uh, mm-hmm. Joel's daughter. Mm-hmm. But I as, it was just... as the show has gone on, yeah. we, we've we learned more about Ellie and yeah. Bella's just been still think that it from the start. I still think that the swear words are super forced. They just sound I feel like it's gotten a little bit better, but I think also, you know, it's a 14-year-old girl swearing, you know, Mm -hmm. just a teenager in general swearing, you know, it's, it isn't a part of, like, for us, we throw the word fuck around, and it's not like a, we're not going to throw the word fuck around, you know, (laughs) like, it's just become part of our vernacular. And for a, a teenager, it's not, yeah. Because you, growing up, most <clears throat> times you'd be like, don't say those words, that's a bad word. You know. Mm-hmm. I think that was the only really thing with when it came to dialogue. It was like, feels yeah. very oh, forced yeah. when they swear. But yeah. besides the point. <laughs> yep. uh, hey, Joe. Yeah. We love it. And uh, we are going to go ahead and close out this episode. But before we close out this episode, we are going to talk about our honorable mentions. Chad, what do you got? Well, <clears throat> I'm really going to live up. Oh, I've seen that one. Uh, really? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm, kidding. I'm going to live up to my, my Chad name uh, of just bro. Uh, I started watching Full Swing. Uh, on Netflix. It's a documentary series uh, about golf. Um, but it's actually really interesting because the <clears throat> like the PGA has existed for, you know, 100 and fucking ever years. Um, but there's a new thing called Live Golf, L-I-V, 
uh, and it's backed by the crown prince of Saudi Arabia, and there's a lot of controversy around it, and it kind of follows uh, the PGA Tour and some of the pros that have left that to go and play for the Live Golf Tour, and it's it's really interesting. Um, but that... And then also shrinking. I mean, it's coming out each week. I talked about Mythic Quest uh, last week, and I finished that, so... It's all enjoyable so god what about you not much over here um we are watching uh it's probably my second or third time eh, second second time through uh modern family nicole has never seen it so we are we're watching that right now it's very funny i love the show i know you recently watched it from beginning to end um other than that well, shrinking as well. Um, we're watching that one together, kind of. So good. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, we, it's been a busy, busy week over here um, with moving stuff out, helping uh, friends move, and other stuff that we're not talking about right now. Um, so I haven't had much time to sit in front of the TV. Um, but understandable. We'll be there soon. <laughs> yeah. I'll have some. I'll have at least <clears throat> something for you guys next week. Yay! <laughs> yeah, I like judging up my like older movies that like we. That I love the honorable mentions because there are like so many movies that like I've seen so many movies, and I I love rewatching them, especially like when Nicole hasn't seen one, and I'm just like. <laughs> We're fucking watching that, <laughs> yeah. you know, like, and then I love bringing it up on here because there are probably some people in our fan base that also haven't seen those movies. So it's cool to like, or TV shows to like, talk about those and be like, Hey, if you haven't seen this and then maybe people are like, I've heard of it. I just didn't know if it was good or not. And then we can be like, it's fucking good. Yeah, it's and then maybe good. you'll go watch it. Like I like, I like this little segment we started doing here. Yeah. Enjoy it. I, I am I am upset that I don't have anything for you guys this week, unfortunately. Uh I will have something next week. I yeah, promise. you've just been busy. It's fine. Yeah. Look yeah. at you just like having I, sponsorabilities. I did find out that Nicole has not seen Borat, so <laughs> it's <laughs> what? Potentially my honorable mention next week. She'll is. never get this. She'll <laughs> never get this. Because oh and and one this day, is what this is why she gets this. Her her uh Cousin? Cousin? Their dog's name is Bilo. And I was like, why Bilo? And her aunt was like, well, from the movie Borat. And I was like, that's fucking hilarious. <laughs> the dog's name is Bilo because of <clears throat> Borat? And she's like, yeah, because like, break of the cage. And I was like, no way, <laughs> that's why the dog's name is that. And I was like, that's fucking hilarious. And I look at Nicole and I'm like, you've seen Borat, right? And she's like, I don't think so. And I'm like, you don't think it. so? Like, you would you would know yeah, with so. a movie that obnoxious and out there. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. that's great. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyways, outside of our honorable mentions and honorable mentions to come, uh, Jake, what should people do? Give us your money so we can be better. Yeah. Uh, if you like what we're doing you want to support us, uh, you can always go to buymeacoffee.com slash allthingsnerd, uh, where you can subscribe for a monthly amount uh, ranging from $5 and up. Um, your monthly subscription, you get something. Or it. Yeah, you get... It's uh, not just you giving us money. Like, you get... Behind the scenes, exclusive merch, uh, things like that. Uh, And we don't... We also don't get any of that money. Um, I mean, technically we do, but then we put it right back into the show. We have not profited. Yeah, we we haven't taken... No, not one red cent has gone into our pockets. Yeah, it all goes right back into... So what we do for do it. Yeah. It's kind of sucks right now. Cause it's winter and then you weren't living here. But like when we were doing cool shit, like in the same room, 
we want to do more stuff like that, but we got to spend money to do stuff like that. Um, yeah. So if you guys like that and our live streams and stuff like that, you know, help us out. Help a brother out. <laughs> give it back. <laughs> yeah. Give, <laughs> give it back. <laughs> we should have a live stream coming soon. We haven't picked a date yet. We're a couple months behind on it. Um, from our collaboration with uh, Battle of the Sketches. Mm -hmm. Um we just haven't found a date to to make it happen, but we we will soon. And uh your money can help that. <laughs> Yay. Uh if you don't want to give on a monthly basis though, you can always just go to allthingsnerdpodcast.com, buy stuff from our merch store. It's you know, then it's just like a one time here's my money. And if and, and if you still you get do, something from it. If you buy any of our stuff, like take a picture and tag us in it. And we will share it and, you know, and we'll shout you out. Together. And, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a uh, collaboration. So, like communism? No. <laughs> no, actually, it's exactly like communism. We're a commune. That was from The Last of Us yeah. this past week. Yeah. Uh, it's just a funny line. Because then Gabriel Luna's like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a communist? <laughs> um, Outside of that, I mean, if you if you don't want to give us your money, but you still like what we're doing, like, share, subscribe, tell people about us. All those things. They it really does help. I know it sounds super like contrived and lame to be like, oh, give us a thumbs up on YouTube. But the more thumbs up we get on YouTube, the more people see it, and then maybe they'll give us their money. And you still played your part, and we get to give you better content, better episodes, better guests, better giveaways, because uh, we love doing giveaways. That's about it. We love you guys so much. <laughs> <laughs> we do. Can't do this without you guys. I mean, we could, but it would not be as fun. So, yeah. So we we, we love you guys. Love you so much. And uh, Jake, you can bring it in. Bring it out. Bring it, yeah. Bring, bring it home. Bring it out. Take it out. Uh, uh huh. This has been the All Things Nerd Podcast. Tink. Tink.